All right, welcome. This is the after the prep is done video for those of you who um, took the class but couldn't complete it or got behind or um, if the packet is finally released and you get to um, paint it. So I'll just go over what we painted. We painted the um, the top rectangle with forest green. It took a couple of coats. We painted this bottom rectangle with ocean blue and then we applied the pattern for the Santa. We also painted this outside edge with uh, honey brown and after we had the pattern on for our Santa we went ahead and painted his hat in country red, the fur in fawn, his face in coral shell, and the beard and slate gray. Then we applied the pattern for the mustache, the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. And we painted the eyes with lamp black and the inside of the mouth with lamp black. So that's where you should be when you start this video. So, Alright, so we're going to add some texture to this background. And I do that with my drywall tape, which is um, little squares. And you can see, you could do it and line it up and make it all nice and straight but I chose to just kind of uh, randomly place the squares around and I'm going to um, first stencil that I use my drywall tape as a stencil I'm going to stencil it first with eucalyptus leaf which is a fairly new color um, by deco art I love deco art paints so, and I like to use a cosmetic wedge to stencil with on these kind of things. And it's very easy. You're just going to um, load part of this, the wide edge of the sponge and just kind of pounce it off on your palette so you get rid of most of the paint just like you would with a stencil brush. And then we're going to go to our piece. And I'm just going to start adding those little checks to the background just to add some interest and changing the direction and they don't have to be opaque they can be kind of um, uh, sketchy you know not the same amount of coverage in all of them and you, you don't have to get all the way down to the edge because we float some shading in there but just quick and easy don't make it a career we're just going to add this to our background. All right, a little bit more in here. Okay, I think that'll do. And then I can just set this sponge aside. If I want to use it again, I'll just take a scissors and clip off this uh, edge with paint. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to float some shading around this um, rectangle. We're going to float the shading with black green and we want to make sure we have a nice soft float. So I'm going to use a larger brush and I'm going to blend this out pretty well. And all I'm going to do is uh, pick a place to start and just float black green all the way around the inside edge of this rectangle. And just as with any other piece you want to um, move your piece around, turn it around. It doesn't have to stay upright. Years ago when we taught without the use of cameras, you know, most of the time we were painting upside down and sideways. Um, you had to be pretty good at it. So, let's see. I'm going to pick up a little bit more paint. But you can see how nicely that's uh, softening and blending that edge. And if you wanted to soften and blend your float even more, you could hit it with a mop brush. This seems to be doing just fine the way it is. So we're going to go all the way around. And on this top, we want to go around these curves, too. Okay. 
And try not to get your peas into the paint like I just did. That's the hazard of having a, a piece that's kind of long. Alright. Cool. Very nice. If I say so myself. So we do need to dry brush a little bit of highlighting in the center. And I'm going to do that again with my eucalyptus leaf. And you want to get a brush that you like to dry brush with. I like to use the Lang Nichols Short Round Sables. And we're just looking to make this center area a little lighter where our letters are going to end up. In the directions that you receive, it says you can put the pattern on for your lettering. Now, if you can do that and hand paint the lettering, or you have the option of also buying a stencil. Now, of course, I have the stencil, so I'm going to forego putting the lettering on for the pat uh, uh, pattern for the lettering on. So I'm just going to lighten up this middle area a little bit with some dry brushes of eucalyptus. Okay, now in the original, there's a little bit of golden straw highlighting through the center. And I'm going to do that with the um, drywall tape again. And I'm just going to get out a little bit of, you don't need much, a little bit of golden straw in my palette. And again, with my sponge, my cosmetic wedge, I'm going to pick up a little bit of the golden straw. Not a lot. There's... There's not a lot of this, but just to add some more interest to that center, I'm going to put in some of the golden straw. And that really brightens up the center. I got some blobs, but it'll be okay. I'm not too worried about that. The lettering will go over those. All right. So now, let's get to the next section. i got to look at my directions. On the blue bottom, this blue rectangle around Santa. Let me see if I can get um, a little further out. There we go. We are going to use our Punchinello as our stencil and uh, this is Punchinello. I use it quite a bit when I'm uh, painting. I like to use it to add interest to the background and what we're going to do is we are going to get some ocean blue and warm white out. Okay, so I have just a little bit of ocean blue and warm white out and again using a cosmetic sponge I'm going to pick up a little bit of ocean blue, not a lot and then I'm going to pick up some warm white and pounce it in the same um, puddle so that I get a lighter value of ocean blue. And I want to pounce that off so I don't want to have a whole lot of paint on this guy. And then we are going to do much the same as we did with the um, uh, top here. We're going to just stencil random clusters of dots around Santa on that blue background using our Punchinello. And again, it doesn't have to be lined up. This is... And if you prefer to use stencil brushes, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. Don't worry too much if you get it on Santa. It'll be okay. And again, we're going to float shade in around the edges so you don't have to get it completely up to the edge there. And just be sure to move your um, punchinello around so you get a different pattern. You don't want them all lined up like little soldiers. So I'm just going to go all the way around. 
Santa here. Okay, so we, you can see we've already added some interest to the background. And then what we want to do is we're going to pick up a little bit more warm white on our sponge so we get an even lighter value. And in these larger areas, you just want to punch them up a little bit with some lighter color. So not a lot, not everywhere, just in the larger areas. All right, so that looks pretty good. So we can put our punchinello away, or out of the way. And now the next thing we're going to do is we are going to float some shading around this rectangle and around Santa with true blue. All right. So I put some true blue out on my palette, and now I'm going to float that shading around Santa and around the outside edge. So I'm going to go around Santa first. Now I'll probably uh, fast forward through this, but I'll let you see the whole thing. start working on Santa's face and so one of the first things I want to do is I want to dry brush some highlighting on the face with warm white it doesn't matter that you get in his mouth a little bit it'll be okay I'm going to go in his nose so I did the middle of his lip I'm going to do the whole circle of his nose and then I'm going to go across his forehead And I'm going to go down the bridge of his nose also. And I got a little heavy, but that'll be okay. And down the sides of his head. I got across his temples. So basically, anywhere I can get my dry brush in, I'm going to dry brush some highlighting with warm white. And then you want to wash your dry brush out so it'll be ready to use again when we go to the hat. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to float some shading on his face with dried clay. I used to use shading flesh and if you have that that'll work just fine but it is a discontinued color so now I use dried clay. I'm going to float shading First, across his forehead under his hat. And this one I probably want to mop out just to make it nice and soft. Get some water dots on there. I'm going to go in the bottom of his nose. So that's like a little C stroke. No worries if you get on his mustache, it'll be okay. And that one I definitely want to kind of soften a little bit. I'm going to go in what I call the corners of his mouth. They are going to be where the mouth goes behind the mustache. 
I'm going to go down the sides of his head or his face. Again, mop if you need to, just to soften it. I'm going to go up this other side. And finally, I'm going to reload my brush. I'm going to go across his cheeks where the mustache is on them. But I'm also going to take that float and go up and around the top of the nose. So let's go here, his cheeks. And then I'm going to go around the top of his nose to set that nose on top of his face and then to come across this other cheek all right now i also want to add a shadow above each eye and i do that with a liner brush and some thinned dried clay and all i'm going to do is i'm just going to take my liner brush and I'm going to start about halfway down one side of the eye on the point of the liner brush I'm going to come up and around and when I get to the top I kind of flatten my brush out and then I come back the other side and come down to a point and that just gets a shadow above his eye to kind of set it back into his head a little bit so about halfway down, starting on the point, when you get around the top, you flatten that brush and then down, come down the other side and end up on the point again. All right, now he needs some color on his cheeks and his nose. And so we're going to just, oh, and on his lip. I forgot one little place to float shading. Sorry about that. I'm going to go across the bottom of his little lip. So you did both sides of the lip and across the bottom of the lip. Now we're going to put some color in his nose, on his cheeks, and across the bottom of his lip with country red. Now you don't want this to be a real strong float. You want to blend it out really well. So you just get a tint of color, not a full-on float. So and when I talk about his cheeks, I'm talking about just his cheeks. This float of color does not go around the top of his nose. So I'm just going to put this color onto his cheek and stop when I get to the nose. So I'm going to soften that out. See, his cheek has a little bit of color now. This side, I'm going to start at the nose and go across. Now I want to bring this up a little bit to round his cheek out. I didn't do that on the other side yet, but I will. So I'm going to start up a little and just pop some of that color and round that corner out. Now his nose is just going to be in the bottom. It's going to be just over that shading that you did because you want to tint it up. But if you didn't have that shading under there, it just wouldn't look right. And then you also want to go across the bottom of the lip to add some red to that lip. Doesn't matter if it gets on the mustache. Now we want to also reinforce this nose a little bit. So we're going to do that with a highlight float of warm white. So let's turn it this way. And I'm just going to do a float of warm white across the top of that nose. You can straighten the shape up quite a bit that way. And there you go. The nose looks pretty good. Now we need to give him some eyes. And the eyes are based in black. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add this crescent shaped stroke in the bottom of each eye with some ocean blue. Now I want you to pay attention. This stroke doesn't go all the way down to the bottom of the eye. We leave some of that black 
showing on the edge so it kind of sits in the bottom but not all the way into the bottom and I don't expect you to do a complete crescent stroke in one try I mean I, I don't so I don't require you to either but what I'm going to do is I'm going to let me see if I can get this where you can see it I like to just start about halfway up where my shading started and I just draw in a line like that and then what I do is I come back and I make it like a crescent moon and then I just fill it in easy peasy now you want to make it pretty good size cover at least a third of the inside of that eye you don't want to make it real tiny because the eyes are what adds a lot of character so here again I'm going to draw a line leaving that little space of black and I'm going to come back and make it a little crescent moon and then I fill it up okay now don't wash your brush out we're going to add our highlighting and all I'm going to do is with my dirty brush it still has ocean blue in it I'm going to pick up a little warm white and kind of mix it on my palette to get a lighter value ocean blue and all I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this middle section and just line a little highlight on his eye so now we're going to come back and we want to dry brush just a little bit of warm white into the black part of the eye so let's get that on there we could have did that when we were dry brushing his face but i didn't think about it so i just want to add just a little bit of a dry brush in that black part of his eye it already kind of makes the eyes a little bit more believable you're going to need a little bit of lamp black and what we're going to do is we're going to give him some eyelashes so liner brush thin down your paint and the way I like to do eyelashes is let's see if we can get a little closer here I like to load my liner brush with thin lamp black and then what I do is I set the point of the brush down inside the black of the eye so I'm starting from inside the black and then what I do is I just push it and squiggle it and add some little what I consider to be eyelashes I also like to add just a little touch in the corner of his eye and a little bit of eyelash on the outer edge of his eye so again set it down inside the black of the eye and just kind of squiggle it out and just make some fuzzy little eyelashes and then add that little touch in the corner and a little bit in here now he has some wrinkles at the corners of his eyes that come out from these eyelashes so what I do with that is I just thin down some dried clay they're kind of crow's feet and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to line some crow's feet there and on the other side I'm going to try to do this without turning my piece and those crow's feet need to have a little bit of highlighting so just a liner brush and warm white you want to just go in between them and add a little bit of a highlight I am going to turn this so I'm going to go in between these and add just a little bit of a highlight to make those crow's feet stand out a little bit more. So the next thing we want to do is we want to add some brighter highlights to the eye. So we're going to take our liner brush in warm white. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some little strokes, highlights, not really strokes, inside the black of the eye. So I did those two, then I'm going to tap a little bit down the center 
of the highlight in the blue of his eye. And the next thing we want to do is we want to give him some eyebrows. And all I do is I just pick up a little blob of warm white with my liner brush and I just kind of tap on his eyebrows. Try not to give him a unibrow, but just some nice fluffy little eyebrows above his eye. So we are going to move to his hat next. And what you're going to need for that is the color cactus flower, or you can use melon if you don't have cactus flower. And you're going to need black plum. All right, so I've gotten out my cactus flower, or in your case, if you want to use melon or uh, spice pink, something a lighter value. And I'm going to dry brush highlighting on the red part of his hat with cactus flower. Um, when deco art comes out with new colors, I like to incorporate them into my designs. Uh, and so I did that, not knowing that 2020 was going to happen. And so sometimes you might not be able to get some of the colors. And I apologize for that. But you, you're, you can always substitute or email me and I'll try to help you find a substitute. What I'm going to do is I'm going to dry brush this cactus flower on my hat. And it's not going to be as light as I want it. That's okay. We'll lighten it up. So don't wash your brush out. Just pick up a touch of warm white. Make a lighter value. And then you're going to dry brush a little bit brighter highlight on this hat and when you go lighter and brighter you don't need to go as much you don't have to dry brush all of this just pop up some of the center areas a little bit now you can wash your brush out and the next thing we're going to do is to float shading on our hat and it's going to go basically all the way around with black plum. So blend it out nice and it may take a couple of uh, layers um, to get it as deep as you'd like it. So I'll start first on the hat next to the brim and I can already see that I'm going to need to do another layer of shading just to get it deep enough. So I'm going all the way around on the hat next to the brim and then down around the mustache okay and then we're going to go I like to go across the outside edge of the hat so I always like to start at the top and come down. Just works best for me. And this is also where I can tuck more color into that corner and kind of curve it and walk that color out a little bit. So I'm going to go down this side. down so I can get it. Alright. Let that dry just a little bit. And... Alright. So let's do this one more time and see if we can get it a little darker. And I'll do it in the same order that I did it before and I'll most likely fast forward through this.
right, that's a little darker and I'm good with that for now. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to stipple on um, the fur on him. And normally I would do the hair first, but because I want this pom-pom to be behind and it'll be fairly easy to pull hair around his face with the, with the fur trim in place, we are going to do that. And we're going to need a brush that you like to stipple with and a um, fawn, warm white, and burnt umber. So I'm going to pull those colors and I'll be right back. Alright, so get out the brush that you like to stipple with. And our fur is based in fawn. So the first thing I'm going to do is load my brush with fawn. And then I'm going to pick up a little warm white and kind of pounce it on my palette to blend it a little bit so I get a lighter value fawn. And let's see. So I'm going to start just kind of uh, pouncing and stippling in the highlighted part of the fur. This is a little white for me. I'm going to come back and tone it down a little bit. We'll come up whiter, but not this first coat. So just kind of stipple it all on there. And you want to come up off this hard edge so that it looks like fur. You don't want to stay straight line. And I'm going to bring that about halfway down. And when you reload, be sure to pick up some more fawn so you don't just come off with lighter and lighter. So we're going to go and stipple this whole hat band, hat brim, it's not a band, all the way down to his mustache. All right. I also want to do that little pom-pom on the top. Again, make it fuzzy. Okay, I'm just going to wipe my brush out on my towel. And I'm going to pick up fawn again. And this time I'm going to pick up a little bit of burnt umber because I want to start putting in the dark area. So I'm going to turn my guy over. I'm going to start putting in some darker fur. It doesn't have to be the darkest right now. And you don't have to worry too much. Well, you want to get that fuzzy line, but don't worry about it too, too terrible much. And as you can see, I'm kind of backing off and blending into that light value that I put in there just to kind of get rid of the... Uh, most definite line that there was there. Just trying to disguise that a little bit. So I'll probably fast forward through this remainder until I pick up another uh, color. do still have a real definite line here so I'm just going to pick up straight fawn and I'm just going to kind of pounce on that and blend it in a little bit more so it's not quite as prominent you see it's, it's a softer blend now so now I'm just going to pick, go into the warm white and pick it up. It's still a dirty brush and it still has fawn in it, but I'm going to pick up straight warm white and I'm going to start putting in some lighter fur. And I always like to just use the point of my brush to make little tufts. And I even get down into this dark area a little bit. But this is... This is how I like to stipple. So again, I'll fast forward through this. All right, I'm 
pretty happy with that. So I'm going to leave it. Now if you feel like you want more shadow in here, you could always come back and stipple some more burnt umber in the bottom there. Or you could even come along with a float and um, do that. So we are going to move on to his beard and mustache and hair now. And um, I'll have to back off a little bit. And what we're going to use to do that is a, a filbert comb brush or filbert rake if you're using a, a low Cornell. And um, this is a 3 8 inch. You could do it with a, a quarter inch, but you'd be stroking a whole lot more. And um, with a filbert comb, basically what you're working with is a whole lot of little liner brushes. And so when you use a liner brush, you use liner consistency paint. So that's what you want to use on this. So I'm going to stroke on the first layer of beard and hair. I'm not going to do the mustache yet. With thin fawn. So you want to thin, take your fawn and thin it down, liner consistency. Let me just see here. So I'm um, thinning this down and I'm making myself a little puddle. Normally I would leave it connected to the main puddle, but I have this little area right in here that I wanted to avoid. And you can see this brush is pretty well filled and I'm going to smash it and get that paint into those bristles. But I don't want it to be this loaded. So I'm going to blot it out a little bit and then I'm just going to load the tips of it. So I'm going to go back to my piece and I always like to start uh, beards in the center of the lip. And as you can see on the original I basically kept it pretty straight. If you wanted to make your beard a little more wavy and curly, you could do that. But for this design, I kept it pretty straight. So I'm going to start, and because it's a liner brush, you want to stay as straight up and down as you can with your brush and on the tips. And this might not show up at first, but what you want to get is a nice layer of fawn lines. So I'm just going to go and I'm kind of following the shape of the beard as it was straight here and now I'm kind of curving to catch that curve of the beard. So I'm just going to continue to lay down this first layer and it's with thin fawn because I always like to have a little bit of gray and a little bit of brown in my beards just to give them a little bit more uh, depth. Now when you come to this uh, edge here just like we did on the stippling here we want to come off of that hard edge so that we can start disguising it. So be sure to stroke past that hard edge. And I'm stopping when I get to this curl because we're going to stroke that on separately. And you can kind of go through the tip of the curl just to get this area here. But as you can see, I'm just laying down a nice base. And what this is doing, it's letting me get um, a feel for my brush and used to it and finding out just how I can manipulate this brush to give me the look I want. So I'm going to continue to do this to the beard and when I come to this part and the hair I will uh, slow down but for now we're going to fast forward to this. So I've got a nice base in there. I like to call this the underwear. And so now I'm going to go up here to his hair and I'll tighten in a little bit. So I want you to think like hair. It's going to kind of fly off the edge. It's also going to start on the sides of his face. If you think about your hairline, it's not a straight line. So again, we're going to come off 
that edge. We're going to start our hair out into the face. And here you can get a little bit more curvy and fancy with it. But you want to start it on the face so that it's not got this hard edge going again. So we'll do both sides. Think like hair. Pull it the way it grows. I even like to pull a few little hairs that come off its cheek. And this is a smaller area, so you're, you're going to pull. You're not going to do as many coats at once, because if you did, you'd get much. So then let's move down to this curl part. So I want this to look like this is his beard cur curling over. So I'm going to start pulling this curve in. And normally you pull the way it grows. When you get to this little curly cue at the end, you can pull the opposite way just to get that sit in there. And be sure to come off the edge of that a little bit to disguise that line. So I'm starting here. And this is all kind of turning from one point. So don't start way down here and pull across. Always kind of pull from this pointed area up here. So I'm going to pull this hair. And this is, again, it's just giving me an opportunity to um, get used to my brush and to get the flow of this curve in here. So beards and hair, they can work up fast or they can take a little time like this is going to take. You just have to work and, and uh, try not to do it in a hurry. Just pay attention and think like a beard. Alright, so now I've got my underwear in on my hair and on my beard. So now I'm going to come up a value and I'm going to start stroking on lighter hair and whiskers. And I didn't wash my brush out, so I still have a little bit of uh, fawn in there. So I'm mixing it with warm white. I'm pulling some warm white out, thinning it down. And now I'm going to stroke on the next layer. So let's get here. And I'm going to follow those di the direction that I laid down in that fawn layer, in that underwear. So I'm going to pull. and start lightening up this beard. It's not it's not the last layer you're going to put on, so don't try to get it as light as it is in the photos with this layer. So we're just going to get this laid in again. I'll fast forward and when I change to the hair at the, on his head, I'll slow down again. Okay, I'm going to go back up to his hair. Remember how I started it off of his face. I want to do that again with this lighter value. Just to start disguising that hard edge of the gray. And I can make it look like he's got some hair coming off his cheek there. And again on the other side. I also did a little tuft of hair coming out from under his hat in between his eyebrows. And so if you want to do that, it might add a little bit of character to him. And let's go down and do this curve again.
And so just kind of keep in the back of your head that this is a tuft of hair that's curving over and twisting up on his beard. So he's starting to look more and more like Santa. So I'm just going to wipe my brush out. And now I'm just going to basically be straight warm white. Be sure to flatten that brush out and spread those bristles apart. So I'll start up here on the easy part. This little hair coming out from under it. Hair on the side of his face. cheek a little bit okay he's looking much better I think I want to make this a little bit more pronounced all right and I'll go down here now and since this is the largest area again I'll fast forward through most of it but I'm just trying trying to fill this in whiten it up go through and add more white to this curl what I want to do is I want to float some shading in it to just define it a little better and what I'm going to do is pick up a little bit of um, ocean blue and a little bit of burnt umber it's kind of an odd mix but it gives me kind of a brownie blue shadow so, and I just brush mix. So I've got ocean blue. Some ocean blue here. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of burnt umber. And you see I kind of have a, a brown, grayish blue brown. So what I'm going to do, I have a couple places I want to float this. I'm going to go on the hair above the mustache. Because I want the mustache to sit on top of the hair. So I'm going to float that in right there. I'm going to do just a little bit at his hairline. Just to tuck some of that hair under his hat. I'm going to touch just a little bit on this little tuft. And here, a little bit. So it looks like that hair is coming out from under his hat. And I need to do the other side here. And if you have hair on his cheek, 
you want to make sure you get a little bit on it on the hair on his cheek you also want to do the shading I needed some more so I'll just brush mix it's a little blue so I add a little bit more brown I'm gonna go under the mustache and under the lip so that's why I didn't worry too much about this little gap here so let's do under the lip with this ocean blue burnt umber mix and then just go around the bottom of the mustache let's see there's my mop brush let's blend that out a little bit and I want to go on the other side of the mustache just to put it on top and I know right now it doesn't look that great when we pull the mustache it'll soften up so I also want to take and add this float along the top of this curl so you want to make sure you blend it out really well and soften it doesn't start right on the edge you want to start off of the edge a little bit and you just want to go all along this curl just to make it look like it's curling around and going on top of your beard and that means even across the top of the curl which it already kind of looks like it's strong brush tried to do a mop with my rake that's not good all right so now I'm going to go back and I'm going to stroke a couple layers of warm white on this curl again fast forwarding I'll try to pick a nice tune Okay, so we're getting closer. I still think it needs to be a little bit wider in some spaces. So I'm going to come in and just straight white. Just add some strokes or strands in the areas I want to lighten up a little bit. You know, there are days when you can do this and it just kind of happens. And then there are days you have to really work at it. Today is one of those days where I'm having to work at it. That's doing a little better. So you can see you just go back and forth playing with it until you get it a way that you, it looks good to you. And if it looks good to you, stop. Um, I probably could stop now, but I'm going to continue on and probably mess it up. Anyway, that's looking better to me. A little bit more white through here. All right, now you see how I kind of uh, blurred those hard edges on this guy. Um, and it's one of those things that you're just going to keep playing with until he looks the way you want him to. Okay, so now that we have that and we've already done the shading, we can start on our mustache. 
And the mustache is a, is a little bit smaller area, so it's going to require you to move a little bit slower than you did on the beard. But we're going to start again with our rake brush and thinned fawn. Smash that out. I don't think it's thin enough. There we go. That's a little better. Blot it out. Pick up a little on the edge. And think like a mustache. Your mustache doesn't just grow from... Mine doesn't anyway. Um, right from this one point. It's going to... You want to spread out the start points all the way around that the nose. So I'm going to start at the top and pull my first. And I'm going to move down and kind of make sure I get all the way around the bottom of that nose. Again, you want to stroke off so that you blur that hard edge. And the, the advantage with the mustache is you can almost do a one long stroke and get that in there. So again, starting at the top. And then I'm just going to move my start point all the way around the bottom of that nose. And I do want to get some hairs out into the black area of his mouth to blur that edge. Okay, so I have the underwear on there. And you have to let this dry. Now if you have a, a heat gun, that's fantastic because you can dry it a whole lot faster. So we're going to dry this. And then we're going to go on with our white and start building up those layers. Now the mustache, I kind of like it to be just a hair whiter than the beard. So it may take a few more layers. So we are going to fast forward through that, but I will include it all. So you can see, I'm, I'm on my third layer here, and I think I'm getting it where I like it. Again, I went off the edges to blur that hard edge of that um, float that we did, and just adding another little layer here. Let's see, I think I need just a little bit more on these edges here. Yeah, let's see, we'll make this side. Alright, I think I like that. Alright, so you remember that, we want this to dry, but you remember that, uh, brown and blue float that we did. We're going to do that one more time and that's going to be around uh, underneath his nose. So it kind of anchors his mustache into his nose. And by far and away the beard, the hair, and the mustache are the most time consuming part of this piece. So get that dry. I'm going to pull out my blue and brown again and okay that's a little eh, that might do it's a little browner that's okay so I'm just gonna go on the mustache under the nose just to anchor it there and 
you want to mop it and soften it so it kind of anchors you see now the nose looks like it's set on top of the mustache and that's exactly what we wanted right now this we're going to work on this trim here and so we're going to need some uh, golden straw warm white and burnt umbers or umber not plural so I'm going to pull those colors and I'll be right back all right, so we are going to dry brush some highlighting on all of this trim with golden straw. And if you wanted to, just to make it easier so you didn't have to worry so much, you could put a piece of tape along this edge just so you could dry brush freely. I think that'll help. better. If it was a, a small area, you could use a post-it note, but since this is long, we'll just we'll run that tape along there. And I just want to get some highlight in there to just, oops, change that value a little bit. Add some interest to that edge. Go along the bottom. Same thing. So, I'll probably fast forward through this till I get to the top section. tape helped a lot made it a lot faster so now we're going to work on the um, I call it the fluor top so you're going to want to dry brush golden straw highlighting through the center of these little crescent moon shapes and the center of this teardrop shape. And then what you want to do is you want to pick up a little bit of warm white and lighten that color up that's on your dirty brush. So a lighter value and you're going to come back and dry brush just a little bit brighter highlight through the center of those. Then you also want to come along your edges in here and there. Lighten those up a little bit. They don't, it doesn't have to be the whole edge. It can be here and there, just the corners, wherever. Not a whole lot. So then, we are going to float some shading with burnt umber. And I know that sounds like it's going to be really difficult because this is a little area. But you're just floating burnt umber. So I'm just going to go on the inside edge of this. And it's, um, it just adds another touch. Oh, too much water, I told you. Well, sometimes you have good days and sometimes you have bad days. So I'm going to go here. And I'm just going to float. Or umber along here. 
and you're going to do a much better job than I am doing right now. So again, I'll probably fast forward through this so you don't see all my mistakes. Alright, and when we get up to the smaller rectangle, what we want to do is we want to float to separate those um, the floor design from that edge. You also want to float around the outside edge of this design. So this gives you an opportunity to kind of uh, bounce around on your floats a little bit. It's already starting to look better. You also want to come around this edge here. So this little section here is going to get shaded on both sides. So yeah, it's a little bit of work, but I think it makes it look a little bit richer. tedious but worth it if I say so myself so we're also going to float the burnt umber we did the bottom edge we want to do next to that center teardrop also want to do inside the teardrop. Basically this um, part of the design, it's going to get shading on all the edges. I'm going to come up here, do that. Let's do this side. Um, now we can drop down inside that crescent shape and float that. Oops, I guess I could have made that where you could see it. So I'm floating inside the design. So I did the outside edge and I'm also going to do the inside edge. So now I'm going to go do the inside of this part. Another one of the hazards of having a long piece to paint on. So we'll get some here. I want to do the outside edge of this teardrop. So it kind of looks like that border is going to be filled in, but we're going to come back with a lino brush and highlight that. So let's do 
to this other side of this teardrop. So any edge that you can possibly think of floating, shading on, it's, it's shading on it. And I'm going to do the inside. Okay, so it actually looks pretty good the way it is. But what I want to do is I want to come back with a liner brush. And I want to pick up some golden straw and a little touch of warm white just for a little bit lighter value. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to reinforce this highlighting in this the border on this. So it's kind of, it's your liner brush, it's thin paint, but you want to wipe it out so it's not a solid. It's more of a dry brush. Okay. In fact, it's kind of good. You don't want it to be solid. And that just gives it another little bit of dimension. Now we have to do it around that uh, center teardrop shape also. Alright, you didn't see that at all. I apologize. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take that warm white golden straw mix and we're just going to line a couple of little highlights inside these areas. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to go in here, and go here. Just to um, pop them out just a little bit more. If you wanted to, you could go back with your burnt umber and deepen the shading inside the elements, but I think I'm good for now. Alright, next thing you want to do is you want to put the pattern on for your um, little manger and baby Jesus. Alright, so the pattern's on, and what I'm going to do first is I'm going to basically paint in um, this little guy. And so the manger is going to be based in with honey brown. And there's quite a bit of stuff that goes on top of it, so it doesn't have to be real opaque. So this is a number 10 flat. It's a, nice, it's a good size for the manger. Just remember to stop when you get to that curl or that beard. All right. The, um, head on baby Jesus is painted with coral shell, which was the same color we used for Santa's head. And then the blanket is painted with baby blue, which is a color we haven't used yet. One coach do it on the head. And so then baby blue for the blanket.
All right, and let's dry that. So what we're going to do is we are going to work on the manger and we're going to dry brush some highlighting on the manger with golden straw. So I'm just going to lighten that up a little bit and dry brush on the legs. Now we're going to float shading on our manger with burnt umber, of course. And we're going to uh, shade on the legs under the manger. I'm trying to do this without turning my piece, but it's not working too well. So sorry, I have to turn the piece. I'm going to go on the leg, under the manger. I also want to go on the leg that's behind. Top and bottom. I'm also going to go where the leg goes underneath the beard. So a couple of places there. And I'm going to go down the sides of the manger. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my uh, flat brush. It's side loaded with um, burnt umber. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick a couple places, color to the outside, and I'm just going to pull and drag across to give it the look of slats or wood grain. And if you wanted to, you could always take a liner brush and add more definite wood graining with thin burnt umber if you wanted to do that. Add a few more little streaks in there. Get on the legs. just to give it the look that it, it's wood. Okay, it doesn't take too much. And then what you want to do is you want to line a little bit of a highlight on that wood grain with golden straw plus a touch of warm white. And so I'm just going to kind of go through the center here and just highlight it a little bit. And the same on the legs. Just through the center, drag a little highlighting. Now we're going to go to baby Jesus, and you want to dry brush highlighting on his face with warm, or his head with warm white. It's not going to take a lot. I mean, it's a little, just a little head. But you just want to get some warm white highlighting on there. It's not showing up so much. So it took too much out. There we go. And as long as you're at it, you can dry brush warm white on the blanket. So now he has some little cheeks. And those are just done with thinned cactus flower or whatever uh, pink you use to highlight your hat. And these can be dry brushed on. Or you can wash them on, whichever is easier for you. I'm just adding a little bit of color, so I'm just going to dry brush a little bit of pink on there. It's not real intense. Then you're going to float some shading on his head. Basically, it's going to go all the way around with dry clay. So I'm just going to go all the way around it.
And then he has eyes, nose, and a mouth that are just drawn on with a thinned dried clay and a liner brush. You want to keep this as thin as you can. And remember, the top of his head has a little bit of hair on it. So you don't want it to be his eyes to be way up. You want his eyes to be about oh midway on his head. So little eyes. Then a teeny little nose. And a little mouth. And just to make those stand out a little bit more, pick up a little bit of warm white on your liner brush that you've washed out. And just touch a little bit of white on his eyelids and on his nose and above his mouth a little bit. Just to make it stand out a little bit more. So his hair is just tacked on with some burnt umber. If you want him to have blonde hair, you could do it with golden straw. I'm going to pick up a little honey brown with my burnt umber. I want it to be a little bit lighter. So I'm just going to give him some little bits of hair on his head. Don't get too carried away. I don't think Mary had that much heartburn. Now the blanket, we already dry brushed it. We're going to line some stripes on it with thin shrewd blue. Liner brush. And line the stripes on it. Now don't, don't line the stripes like straight up and down. Follow the, shirt, the curve of the blanket a little bit. So line some little curved stripes on the blanket. And I'm going to dry those real quick because I do want to line a little highlight on those stripes with um, warm white. So I'm just going to pick up a little warm white on my liner brush and just line a little bit of a highlight on those stripes just to make it even look more like it's curving around. And then I'm going to float shading on my blanket with true blue. There's not a lot of shading. It's just a little blanket. So I'm going to go under his chin and across the bottom of the blanket next to the manger. And then I also want to come across the top. So all sides get a little bit of shading. There is a little bit of straw in the, um, in the manger. It's along the top. And so we're just going to um, do golden straw with your liner brush and you're just gonna tap or stroke on a little bit of straw coming out of the manger make it all different sizes and make it go different ways Make it a little curved so it looks like it's actually curving out of the manger. And then you are going to pick up a little warm white and just touch a little highlight here and there. Doesn't have to be on every piece of straw. But just a little here and there. Doesn't even have to be on an actual piece of straw. It can be on its own. So he has a halo around his head. And that's just a 
side load float of golden straw and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of float a circle around it okay so there's his little hazy halo easy peasy but you also want to add a float of that brown and blue mix. So ocean blue, a little bit of burnt umber. You want this to be really soft. And what you're gonna do is uh, float around that halo and around the manger just to pop it off his beard a little bit. So I'm just gonna go in there. It doesn't have to be a perfect float, just enough to pop things off the beard. soften that one out. I kind of got that halo a little out of whack down there, so I'm going to Float that bottom back in there a little bit. I don't want it to be an oblong. I want it to be a, a circle. We've got baby Jesus basically done. So now the vines, um, we're going to line the vine part. You can see this here. We're going to line this vine part with burnt umber. Okay, just a liner brush, thin burnt umber. I'm just going to, I like to give it a little bit of a comma strokey look. So, not too much. So I'm just going to line those. lines on. And the next thing I want to do is I want to take a number four filbert brush to paint my leaves on. I need to find it. There we are. And the leaves are painted on with forest green. So just a number four filbert. Load it with forest green. And I just put little dashes where each of my leaves need to go. So I'm going to just add some little leaves. You could paint these in with the liner brush or a round brush um, if you're more comfortable doing that. But I like to use a filter for leaves because I can get them all in one little stroke. if I'm lucky. Okay. Let's do something on this side. This one. So see how quick and easy those are with a silver? Don't make 
make them too tiny because we do have to do a little highlight on them. And then we're going to float a highlight across the top edge of each leaf. Now you decide what the top edge is. With golden straw. Basically you're just going to touch your brush in the top of each leaf. So I've decided this is the top edge of that one. It's going to be pretty stark at first, but it will dry and tone down. So just pick a side to be the top and add a little highlight stroke. In there. Just enough so it looks there's a little bit of co extra color in there. We got another beard. Let's see. I know I have a couple over here. Need a little. Okay, so it just has a little hint of golden straw on it. And then you're going to go back with your liner brush and line the little uh, stems that connect the leaves to the vines. And those are just lined with burnt umber. So nothing too difficult. Just need to connect those leaves to the stem. Okay. Slowly but surely we're getting there. Now, the only thing we have left to do is we're going to come with that Burnt Umber Ocean Blue shading again. We're going to just kind of touch a little bit of the shading here and there around the leaves and the vine. So it doesn't have to be everywhere, but just a touch here and there just to pop that off of the background of the beard in the back a little bit okay nothing too uh, horrendous and then we're going to have going to come in and do the lettering so I have stencil so of course I'm going to be using that so you are going to need lamp black and then ocean blue and warm white and black green Okay, so um, I'm going to stencil my lettering on. You could paint it on. It's going to be stenciled on with lamp black. And I wanted to have a halfway decent chance of getting it on there a little straighter. So I went in and drew a little chalk line to line my stencil up on. And so I'm going to, again, using my... A cosmetic wedge I'm going to stencil this on with lamp black and the lettering is fairly easy to just paint on but I at the end of a project we always kind of go oh, lettering you know so I thought now oh, I'll cut a stencil and just make it a little bit easier Now I want you to pay attention that because it's a stencil on some of these it has there has little bridges so that the centers of the O and the P don't fall out. So what we're gonna do is 
We're going to stencil this on with lamp black first. And then I'm going to come back and with a liner brush and I'm going to paint those bridges in. So it looks more like it was hand painted and stenciled. If you leave the bridges, then it's a dead giveaway that you stenciled that lettering on. And that's not a bad thing. But if you really want it to look neat and finished, you want to go in and um, get rid of those bridges. So there we go. Got that done. So now I'm going to come in with my liner brush and I'm going to fill in those little bridges with lamp black. So that you can just do on any lettering that you stencil. You want to make it look more like you painted it as opposed to stenciling it. You just need to take the minute and fill in the bridges. See, the P looks better already. Okay, so there. Let's see, get yourself a small... This is a number, it's a quarter inch flat. Hmm. So you want a small flat. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stroke this highlighting on my letters. And that's done with warm white plus ocean blue. If you just left the lettering like this, it would look really um, dull. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to stroke what I call a highlight on my lettering just to get some more interest. This one I want to bring down a little bit more and let's bring this down. So see already that lettering is looking a little bit more interesting. And let's see this little guy. And it's kind of dry brush. It doesn't have to be opaque. In fact, you don't want it to be opaque. It's a really simple thing you can do to add interest to your letters. Okay, so there they already look more interesting. And then the next thing we're going to do, and this is something that I do to all my lettering practically, is I'm going to take my liner brush and I'm going to take black green. And I'm going to make a wash, thin it down, and I'm going to line a shadow to the top and left of each letter. The shadow is going to go on the background. So thin down some black green. That was the shading color we used on this. So I'm going to get rid of that hair. And I'm going to go across the top and down the sides. So the top and the left, wherever there's a top and a left. So there's a little top there. Here, there's top, left. This has a top. So go across there. Left. Little top there, little top there. And that just kind of helps to pop that lettering off the background a little bit more. So, top, left, left. This is the top. This is the left.
right across this top there's a little bit of left there top There we are. Move this paint out of the way. Let's back up a little bit. And there you go. Don't forget to sign your piece. Erase that chalk line if you put it on there. And varnish. And enjoy. I hope you all have a wonderful Christmas. You celebrate the hope. Christmas presents us every year. Uh, thanks for painting with me. I appreciate it.